Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools How-To Video Series. This video is a second in a series on MIDI for my MIDI 1 class. This video is on the initial setup for recording. So we're going to be going over the click and the count off, creating a click track, setting up tempo and meter, or configuring the record modes, input quantize, and a little bit of recording. As always, my shortcuts will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. If you're a PC user, you can find a conversion from the Mac modifiers at the end of this video. I'm not going to use a ton of shortcuts today, but here are some really helpful ones when you're recording MIDI. Click and count off on and off 7 and 8 on the number pad. Record 3 on the number pad and play stop 0 on the number pad. So those are really helpful when you're recording. This video is geared towards those new to Pro Tools and new to recording MIDI in Pro Tools. So this is some of the basic things that you're going to want to do when you're preparing to record in Pro Tools for the first time. Um, so one of the things that we're going to want to have is a click track. So we need to create a click track and there is a handy menu item for that. Under track menu we select create click track and there we go. So it creates an aux input and puts the click plugin on it. And uh, once we have that set up, the next thing we need to do is control when we are going to use uh, the click, be able to turn it on and control it. So if you remember from last time, this is the click on and off button. And if I hit play, we can confirm that we've got the click working. And you can turn that on and off with the seven on the number pad. So now that we've confirmed that the click is working, we need to look at how to configure when it's going to work. So we can double click on this button and open up the click and count off options. And we can also go to the setup menu and go and find the click count off options. So there's another way, but uh, two's enough for now, isn't it? Okay, so up at the top is uh, when the click is going to play. So we can have during play and record. We can have only during recording, or we could have only during the count off. If we already had some drums recorded, we won't need the click to keep us in time. So down at the bottom we have the count off and we can check this if we only want the count off when we are recording and we can set the number of bars. I usually use two to make sure I've really got that tempo down before I start recording. And obviously you can use what works for you. We've uh, got a separate button for the count off right here that we can click to turn on and off the count off. Sometimes we want it, sometimes we don't. So you can use eight on the number pad or use this button to turn on and off the count off. So we'll get into later uh, where you might use pre-roll uh, instead of a count off uh, before you're punching in and recording. So next we should set up our tempo. So over in this section we have the tempo field for manual tempo. Remember we have the conductor here which activates the tempo ruler and allows us to have tempo changes in our session. So let's say I don't know exactly what tempo I want to use for what I'm about to record. I can click on this tempo field and I can tap the T key on the QWERTY keyboard and tap the tempo that I want, and it will update here. Um, so let's do that. And so I get 117. If I'm happy with that, I can hit enter to accept that number. You have to hit enter when you have a highlighted field like that. And you can see it updates on the tempo ruler at the beginning of the session on my song start marker 117. If I just know what the tempo is, I can click on that field and type in a value, type in 120 or 125, whatever it is, and you see it updating the tempo ruler. All right, so next let's look at meter, just in case you don't want to use the default 4-4. Uh, that Pro Tools defaults to tempo of 120 and meter of 4.4. We can go to this menu here, or the view menu, and show the meter ruler, and we can click the plus symbol at the end of that, and say at bar one, we want to have the meter be 3.4, and our meter is 3.4, or set it to whatever meter you need. I will undo and go back to the default 4.4. Next, we need to configure our record and play modes. So we don't want to be in loop play or loop record. So I'm going to right click and turn off loop on the play. And I want to have, be in normal mode for the record. In an upcoming video, we'll talk about both of those features and how we can use those uh, during recording. So we're reviewing what we've done. We created a click track. We set our tempo. We uh, have the click on, we, have a, we set up our count off, um, we created meter and tempo, and now we're ready to record. So we need 
us a track to record onto. So we're going to create one stereo instrument track. Create. And let's go over to the mix window, and we need to put a virtual instrument on it, and we need to name it. So I'm going to name it little lowercase v and i and drums. We'll get into my naming scheme in class. So I need to instantiate a virtual instrument. So I'm going to come up here, go to multi-channel, go to instrument, and select boom. Click on boom. And that brings up the boom virtual instrument. And I will then record enable this track. So then I need to find the keys that I'm going to use to play this instrument. So we have pretty small keyboards here in the lab, so you may need to use the octave up and down buttons to find the notes that you want to play. So we will notice that when I added that virtual instrument, the MIDI out for the instrument track automatically assigned itself to this virtual instrument. So one more thing that I'll want to do before I start recording, because I do not have perfect timing. Um, and we'll look at other ways to quantize, but for right now, we're going to look at input quantize. So go to Event, Event Operations, and select Input Quantize. Up at the top, we need to enable input quantize, and we need to select a grid value. So we're going to select one a 16th note for right now, and then close that down. So that's going to automatically quantize the incoming MIDI to 16th notes. So let's go. I'm going to hit three on the number pad, and away I go. So again, before I recorded, I hit return and then three on the number pad to start recording. We'll get into the recording process next time.